what's going on everyone um, just driving and I'm in white rabbit today my little white car um, yeah just uh, whenever I'm driving in this car I don't have a radio so I do a lot of thinking um, and honestly we, we live in this uh, beautiful time period of 2020 to where we just have technology at our fingertips um, and I don't have to be a crazy person like back in the 90s and carry around a tape recorder so I can get these thoughts off my chest um, I don't know uh, yeah by the way my car it's the white 96 Pontiac I call it white rabbit um, I've had this little theme of rabbit stuff going on for a minute now, uh, which is funny too, cause I guess it's turned into a bad thing. Like, uh, I use, I use the white rabbit as like a little cartoon character for the podcast. I've always, it's my spirit animal essentially. Um, I found it out through tarot, um, which I'll make a video on that one day, how to find out your spirit animal using tarot cards, um, but sadly it's been demonized really with like the whole Pizzagate thing and Q and Adrenochrome and all that, because I guess the Adrenochrome symbol, the molecular makeup or whatever, is shaped like a rabbit. So, I don't know. I'm sure somebody will be like, uh, in the conspiracy truth community, because sadly the truth community and conspiracy community has been like, uh, I don't know, divided, man, into these little sectors of people who believe in Q and people who don't, so then they go at each other's throats, or people who believe the earth is flat and people who think it's round go at each other's throats. And it's like, dude, we're all here for the same reason. Watching these videos and listening to these podcasts and different stuff because we want to know the truth. We want to know what's really going on. And whether we buy into it or don't buy into it, whatever we're listening to or watching, like, uh, it doesn't really matter because it's like, well, it matters because. It matters that people are at each other's throats because it's united we stand, divided we fall. And we all have the same intention. It's just, I don't know, man. People get behind an alias and a, and a fake profile picture and they turn into D-bags, you know, in the comment sections. But, yeah, White Rabbit. That's one of my symbols. I'm still going to fucking use it, you know. Um, kind of reminds me of I almost named my kid Isis after the Egyptian goddess and like I kid you not like two years later after my kid was born um Isis the terrorist group came out and I'm like well it's kind of good I didn't name her Isis you know but yeah sorry I went on a little bit of rambling um I wanted to do some AA talk, you know, um, the reason why it's pitch black, by the way, is I'm a third shift, uh, stalker, so, yeah, it's like sunrise, you know, right now, but my windows are tinted, so it's pitch black, um, hopefully you can hear me good, I'm driving, I'm not being dangerous, it's, you guys are sitting in my cup holder right now. Um, but I wanted a couple of things that I haven't been to a meeting in forever because like I said, I work third shift and all the meeting houses are shut down right now with the Corona. So I figured I'm just going to do some AA talk, you know, on here. Um, I've made another video before just talking AA stuff, uh, but I don't know. You might see a trend in it until the meeting houses open back up again, if they do. 
Um, basically, something that I was thinking about just working earlier today, like, my wife put out a podcast without me last night, and uh, turned out really good. I think she did a really good job. Uh, check it out if you want. She just said, uh, before I went to work today, she was uh, sitting there and talking to me. She's like, do you care if I do a podcast without you while you're at work? And I was like, no, honestly, that's fucking awesome because we have a shit ton of stuff backlogged and that helps me put a dent in it and uh, honestly it helps the channel too because the more you put out you know Gavin McGinnis said that uh, he got a question by a commenter one time it was um, you know how, how do I make it as a YouTuber and Gavin McGinnis basically said uh put out as much content as possible because even if you think it might be boring someone else will like it you know and it's kind of crazy too because he's got a point like there's videos that I've like poured my heart and soul into thinking it's going to be like oh everyone's going to love this video it's going to be awesome and like uh it gets like 10 views and then I'll put a video I'll just throw a video together and it'll get like a thousand views and it's like I mean, it has to be with algorithms and shit, I I guess, but, uh, it's just, it's mind-blowing, um, and it makes sense if you honestly, if if you could be doing something and making a video out of it, I mean, do it, you know, um, but I was listening to her talking, and I was just, like, I felt this, like, moment of, uh, gratefulness, you know, um, and, I don't know, it just got me thinking about, you know, that I almost lost her at one point because I was drinking so heavy, and I got a little irritated, and I'm seven months sober, so I mean, I have a sober mind now, but I I did get kind of irritated just with uh, people, you know, that she, she had told me after I got clean, out of rehab, and uh finished, graduated my IOP classes, like, uh, that all these people were telling her to leave me, you know, and I just, I got kind of irritated, because it's like, if she would have left me while I was rock bottom, before I got help, I, I wouldn't be here right now, um, and I wish that more people would join Al-Anon, which is like a, a sister group to Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, Bill and his wife, well, Bill, Bill started Alcoholics Anonymous, and his wife started a sister group called Al-Anon, which is basically for people who are married to alcoholics, um, brothers who are... Ma- uh, related to alcoholics, sisters who are related to alcoholics. It's everyone who is affected by another alcoholic, any type of person, a friend, a friend of an alcoholic can go. And it's essentially like a support group for each other. You can swap ideas on, Hey, my husband's an alcoholic. How do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? And I wish that people would use those type of groups. Um, Instead of just, like, because it's, it's hard to, when someone isn't an alcoholic and they're dealing with an alcoholic, I feel like they deal with it the wrong way sometimes. And it's because they will never be able to wrap their head around how it is to be an alcoholic. Um, and anyone who is an alcoholic can talk to another alcoholic and they they're preaching to the choir because they get it they get it but I feel like sometimes an alcoholic talking to someone who doesn't have that that brain of an alcoholic they can't wrap their head around it so sometimes man they just be given horrible advice some of the sober people 
because like I don't know I mean I get I'm not mad at the people who told my wife to leave me when I was drinking heavy but I know for a fact that I the downward spiral I was in and the road that I was heading down if she would have left me I'd be dead right now and that's that's a fact um but I don't know. That's just that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. And my other thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is more to um, other alcoholics, man. When I first got into AA, one of my first meetings, I almost walked out of the fucking meeting and never came back because I had went to several meetings of AA before I finally spoke and admitted my alcoholism, you know, because, and that's honestly how a lot of people do when they first, uh, go in AA is, uh, they will be, um, going to the meetings, but they're not even sure if they're going to stay at the meetings. They're not even sure if they're going to go. They're just trying it out. And I was one of those people who was just trying it out, man. Um, but I almost got turned off real quick. And for anyone who's an alcoholic watching this, who has this mindset, all that I ask is that you have an open mind and you, you don't, um, not so much that you have to believe the way I believe, but that you just consider this before you say it at a meeting because you might run someone off who's new. Okay, when I when I first started going to meetings, I I was a bartender. Um and somebody was speaking, at, it was their turn, they were speaking and they started talking about oh, this bar uh or no, it wasn't a bar, it was a distillery. Oh, this distillery got shut down. And everyone in the meeting cheered. And it made me mad. Because it's like, what are you guys doing? Why, why the fuck are you fucking cheering that a distillery got shut down? You know, and in their minds, they're like, yay, a distillery got shut down. That means, you know, that less alcohol is going to be put on that shelf. Alright, I'm sorry to burst y'all's little bubble, but alcohol ain't going nowhere, dude. And it's just not, dude. It's been around since the dawn of time. The, the fucking Sumerians made beer. The first people who were civilized, who the first people who were not cavemen, the first people who were civilized, man. And I'm not going to get into ancient astronaut theory. You guys know how I believe... I'm an ancient astronaut theorist. I'm not getting into all that, but they they knew how to make beer. You can uh, you can either take the main historical route of it of um, they just learned they figured it out, or you can take the ancient astronaut theory of they got taught by the Anunnaki, aka the fallen angels, aka the Nephilim. Um, hang on just a second. Damn, my fucking lighter died. Alright. Um, but yeah, the reason I'm saying that is if it's the, if it was there to, at the dawn of time, it's always going to be here. Alcohol is not going anywhere. But the part that made me mad was that they're looking at it from just that one perspective. They're not looking at it from, oh, that distillery shut down. Do you know how many people lost their fucking jobs? And do you, do you realize that one of the main things of suicide and alcoholism is losing a job? And <clears throat> we got this coronavirus going on right now. Do you know how many people have lost their business or lost their jobs, you know, and have become alcoholics because of this coronavirus, because they lost 
their income. Do you know how many people have committed suicide since they lost their jobs? Since they lost their business that they just started running? And these, these people were fucking cheering with that cult mentality. You know, people get scared off from AA because they think it's a cult. Sometimes, man, it is a cult, you know? It's a cult that works. You're not going to agree with everyone, but I just wanted to smack the shit out of everyone and get the fuck out of there because it's like, if this is you guys' mindset, you want me to lose my job and become more of an alcoholic? Like, I was a bartender, you know? So I was walking that fine line of I'm an alcoholic, but I'm also a distributor. I'm, I'm a legal drug dealer, essentially, you know? Um, it's a real w weird place to be in, definitely. But, uh, I don't want you thinking I'm getting discouraged that I'll never go back to a meeting because this was, like, years ago. Um, and I, I still am in the program. It, it works. You know, it works for me. But I'm not, I'm not a cult member, you know? Never will be. I'm sorry I'm a free thinker and always will be. Um, you know, that's one reason I left Christianity was, uh, they kept calling me a lamb, that I was part of a flock. I'm a lamb. Uh, Jesus, my shepherd. Dude, there ain't much difference between a lamb and, lamb and a sheep, man. I'd rather be a, a wolf. I'd rather be a lone wolf with a mind, free thinking mind. I'll be a part of a group if it helps me survive and live, but... I ain't doing all this crazy hive mind shit, but I don't know. That's all I got to say, man. I hope it helped someone. Maybe you guys could uh, talk to me, give me some advice, whatever. Y'all have a good day.